Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan. This is the fourth tutorial on uh, creating a Sudoku solver. So um, for uh, the agenda for this tutorial, we will be creating this big loop that we uh, initially created um, but haven't stored anything in this procedure. And this loop will go through each item as we discussed uh, in the previous uh, tutorial. Um, going through each square, just a short recap, um, although I won't go into enough detail to fully understand this, um, you will pick this number, and we'll try its possibilities, we'll go to the next, the next, the next, and we'll come to a cross, then we'll go to the next, and we'll keep solving them. And if we ever find that no number works there, all numbers from zero, 1 to 9, I mean, have been exhausted, we will replace it back with 0 and backtrack until we can go forward again and uh, resume solving it. And uh, so this is just a, a logical way for a, a program to go through each possibility. So uh, let's see. Um, yeah, the first thing that we're going to do is um, figure out what we want uh, this loop to produce. This loop right now, it, it takes a grid into it and uh, returns a grid and uh, unmodified. And so in the main, what we want to do is we should actually uh, put uh, this one first, a print grid first, so it'll print this grid, which is all zeros. And then we can uh, delete this. This was just a test, I guess, from before. We will then do, uh, let's see, uh, print. We would now want to print this grid, but we want to print the grid that results from the loop. So what we're going to do is print out the loop. And if you do control space, it'll fill in all your uh, spots, just so. And we replace y and x with 0 and leave grid. So it'll send loop the grid, and the inner bracket will be constructed first. And it'll return a grid, and then the outer uh, loop, uh, print thing will uh, print the modified modified uh, grid. All right. So, um, let's see. Uh, so we'll start by uh, writing in the grid. Uh, we do at the end want to have a return grid. Um, that's all good. So we will leave that. Now, what we want to do is say while we uh, have a loop that runs through as long as we're solved. How do we know when to quit? How do we know when we're fully solved? Well, what we'll do is we'll create a, a while loop for this. Uh, a while loop uh, looks something like this. And while, while whatever condition in these brackets is true, this will keep running and running and running. And when it's not true, then it will end and send out a grid. So we want to know, is this thing solved? Now, how would you test if it's solved? Well, this is the last uh, uh, item that it will solve. So obviously it should be up to here. Um, and so there's two things we want to know. The first one is, uh, is this uh, still zero? If that one's still zero, it's not solved. So we will do a while, uh, while this last item is not solved. So I will do uh, for that, I would say uh, grid 8, 8, and uh, double equals 0. Um, so, uh, type that wrong. Uh, so while that grid is 0, that would be true, keep looping, because it's not solved. This true should evaluate to not solved. True would be if not solved. And the other thing we want to add is if uh, validity of... Uh, a certain spot, and you uh, there we go. Validity, and instead of uh, and that was a control space to put that in, as I've said before. Um, if uh, not that exclamation mark is not uh, validity at eight eight grid. So while this is not valid, so this has to become uh, not zero and every row, column, and square associated with this uh, digit here 
should not produce any errors. And then we can safely assume that we're done. Now, I will for this tutorial be placing an error somewhere in the code um, and uh, either to come or uh, I already have and the goal is to try to find it so I will uh, at the end there should come out with only one error if we can uh, type all this in right. We'll see uh, this is a bit of a gamble on my part. So let's see what happens. Um, so while it's not solved, that's in this group, so uh, let's add a comment here. While not solved, do this. Um, and we will put in an if. Because remember, we go to this first digit and increase it by one. And then we keep, in we always are increasing by one, but if the digit becomes nine, you don't increase it to ten, you backtrack. So we have, um, we want an if to divide the two procedures out. So we'll say if uh, grid, and it would be y x is less than 9. So if it's less than 9, uh, run, increase the number. Um, and otherwise, we want to, um, uh, I'll write it like this. We want uh, the grid yx, which has now become 9 and needs to be uh, brought back to 0. Um, because remember, we hit 9, we set it back to 0, and we go backwards, undoing our steps. And so, uh, we set that to 0. I believe that's all right. And then uh, there will be one other thing we're adding, but uh, one thing you can do, in this case I would, uh, notice that there's just such a short line. It's almost a waste of lines, this little bit of code here, and we won't end up adding more. You uh, can combine them, actually, into just a row like this. This semicolon denotes the end of a line, basically. It doesn't actually read line by line. See, I can put a, a new line here, and it would be fine with that. Um, because it really is waiting till it hits uh, this semicolon at the end to say go to next. And of course things like while and for and if and uh, different uh, checks and uh, uh, don't need a semicolon, only statements do. So, um, so if it's smaller than 9, then what's the first thing we do? What's the first thing we do when we hit zeros, when we hit this square? This first one? Well, we set it to 1. We set it 1 bigger than it was. All right. So what we will type in for this would be, uh, very simply, uh, grid, and it would be uh, y, x, plus, plus. Remember, plus, plus is a shortcut for plus equals 1 or, uh, or uh, whoops, or, uh, grid at yx equals grid at yx plus 1. Um, and so we increase it by 1. And then the next thing we want to do is have another question. We want to say, is it valid? So we put a 1 there, is that valid? So we say, if validity, now it autocorrects when you hit uh, space, uh, control space, and it set it to x, y as the validity is. And of course I've said already that that was, uh, uh, could have been written better, should have been uh, more consistent. But anyways, we'll leave it as uh, yx, uh, change it to yx, that is. So check if that spot is valid. And if it is, then um, we would say int, uh, let's create two variables, int yy, comma, xx. Okay, uh, this is how uh, why I'm writing yyxx. What we want to do is something called recursion. So this loop will run through, and it will call itself. It will say, okay, run through myself again, and myself again. And so what we want to do is say, okay, run this loop, at z starting at the spot yx, 0, 0. And then I want to run through the loop again, starting at this spot, and set it to 1. But this spot is a different y and x. So what I wanted to do is call myself, but send different y and x values. 
and that will be denoted by the changed y will be yy and the changed x will be xx. All right, so how do what should the new yy and xx be? Well, there's two things. Uh, if x, that would be the horizontal, is 8, that would be all of these spots. x is 8. If it's 8, we want to make y 1 bigger, go to the next line, that would be down here, and set x way over to 0. That's the next one. But if it's not equal to 8, then don't change y, just uh, go to the next x and the next x, and so on, as we go across. So what we want to do is put a little if statement here. We'll make this a little one-liner if statement. If x, remember double equals 8. If that, do this, and else, otherwise, do that. So if x is not 8, you would do this second statement. So if x is 8, then we would have yy equals y plus 1, semicolon, and also we would do xx turns to 0. Now, if um, it is not 8, then yy equals y, and uh, x equals x plus 1. Now, in a case like this, it might look like I wrote this wrong. y equals x plus 1. Why not just do y, uh, oh, xx equals x plus 1? Why not just do x plus plus? And the reason behind that is um, x has not been, uh, we don't know what x is yet. So what x plus 1, what is that? Or xx plus 1, what is that? We haven't defined it. And if we did define it, it let's say a 9 or an 8 or a 7, we'd have to pick one digit, not whatever x is. And so it's just best to say the new one is one bigger than the old one and leave it very simple and logical. And so uh, let's uh, see exactly uh, what we did. And there's one other thing I, we will have to add. Um, in this loop, it's pretty much almost done. Um, it's very small because of recursion. It calls itself many times, and so it's, it's more complicated in the, uh, uh, than it looks. Um, so we say, okay, is it solved? This is at the beginning, starting from 0, 0, y and x, starting from 0, 0. Is it solved? And the answer would be no, hopefully. And then we say, well, is 0 smaller than 9? Well, yes, we haven't hit the end. So set the first spot to 1, 1 bigger. And now check, is that valid? It should be valid if we did everything right. And then um, change this yy and xx uh, to the next spot. But then we need a call loop. So we will write here, loop, and then we'll put in yy, comma, uh, oops, xx, comma, grid. Yeah, semicolon at the end, make everything happy. All right, so we will now call this new spot. Then loop, let's say loop number two, although it's the same name. Loop number two now starts at this spot and says, ah, is it solved? No. Is this... Uh, smaller than 9? Yeah. So set this one to 1. Now when it sets the second one to 1, it'll say, um, that's this line right here, it'll say, is it valid? And the answer would be no. There's two ones in a row. So, um, if it's not valid, it will uh, basically just end that one right there. Um, and it'll continue on this while loop. Um, now, if, uh, let's see, if we ever hit a spot where we hit 9, and we set this to 0, we have to add one other thing, and that's the break. Now, by running break, what that does is say is, end the current loop that I'm in right now. And so it'll go back to the loop 1. If it was in loop 3, let's say, it would jump back to loop 2 and just end that episode of loops. Now, I want to see what happens when I hit run. Have a look at this. It looks pretty solved, but it's not completely. Notice it printed out the blank first, and then it printed out uh, this sort of solved. And it looks good at first, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, obviously correct. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. That all works. Uh, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six. That is all correct. All the top uh, three boxes are correct. However, you'll notice uh, for one, there's a zero in the bottom uh, left-hand corner. The last digit is a zero, and there is another error in this, and that is that um, there are two ones in this corner box, which obviously is a problem. So there are a couple of mistakes. There are probably mistakes throughout this thing. Um, and anyways, those are two mistakes that I'm seeing right off the bat. And so, like I had said, I had purposely put in an error. I did get the result I expected to get with this one error that I've typed in, a, really a typo, and it's so easy to make these. Um, luckily, I did this purposely, and I will not answer it in this tutorial. Hopefully, you will uh, either watch the next tutorial or try even better, try to figure out on your own how what went wrong. And I'll just tell you there's just one simple thing. Um, two characters actually need to be changed in this entire uh, thing and hopefully that will solve it. So uh, try to figure it out and uh, let me know if you can. Until then, uh, happy jabbing.